Oh, this is cool. It's node red. And oh, look, the gate is open. Let's go. We are on Trihecme checking out Industrial Intrusion, the warm up challenge for their Industrial Intrusion CTF kicking off tomorrow. Today, we are hacking into an industrial control system. The goal? Open a log gate by bypassing the badge authentication. Let's see how quickly we can break in. First things first, I am connecting to the VPN. While that loads, here's the room, industrial intrusion. It's marked as medium difficulty, but we'll see about that. Looking at the tasks, the first one covers the competition rules. What's a CTF? Who can join? What are the challenges? Basic CTF stuff like don't attack try hand me infrastructure, don't attack other users' machines, don't share the flags. Pretty common sense, right? The second task is about teams. To participate in this CTF, you'll need to join a team even if you're playing solo. I guess that's how their infrastructure works. And if you're a student, make sure to validate your student status to show up on the student leaderboard. All right, now the fun part, the actual challenge, the breach. Okay, so we are starting the machine. And while we're waiting for that to happen, let's go over the challenge description. This engagement aims to find a way to open the gate by bypassing the badge authentication system. The control infrastructure may hold a weakness. Begin Explorer and see if you have what it takes to exploit it. Be sure to check all the open ports. You never know which one might be your way in. Oh, okay. So the mention of the open ports is a clear hint. We're going to start by gathering some basic intel. We'll do a port scan to figure out what's listening and then take it from there. And to see the IP address, we are going to have to wait a little bit longer. For the port scan, I'm using Rust scan, which is super fast. When it finds open ports, it hands them off to Nmap. It's like Nmap's hyperactive little brother, if you will. So the way this works is Rust scan, and then we're going to give it the address, and then double dash, and everything after the double dash is passed directly to Nmap. And here we are asking for any server banners it can grab. We are already seeing a bunch of open ports, 22 SSH, 80 probably a web server, and then a bunch of ports we have no idea what's listening on. And now it's passing those open ports to Nmap. And Nmap is gonna try and grab banners from any of the servers listening on those ports. We see a bunch of open ports, but only SSH gave us a banner. That's okay. Let's use curl to poke at the other ports. And so we're gonna start with obviously the 80. And looks like a basic website, gate status monitor, and the script has an API endpoint here that's being triggered every two seconds. It is displaying the image and the flag. Let's take a look at uh, how that looks. So gate status monitor and gate is currently closed, right? And our goal is to open this gate. You know what? Let's open a different terminal so that we can keep referring to the open ports. And now let's Tackle the second port again. We're going to use curl. And then the port number is going to be 102. Doesn't appear to be anything we can get at. Let's try 502. And speaking of which, let me make it more visible for you, right? So curl. It said 502. Connection reset by peer. Let's try 1880. Okay, that's another web server, Node Red. Okay, let's see what that is about. 
And so we're going to copy that. Oh, this is cool. It's Node Red. Load code visual programming environment often used in industrial control systems or home automation. Well, uh, right now we don't have a clear path forward, so let's poke around and see what we can break. So we can see it has two code paths. It's reading the coils, doing a function, and then it goes into motion detection. And then it's reading again the coils going through a different function and then reading the badge. Let's see what's in the functions. We just double click that. If there is no message payload, no coil data available. If there is a message payload, meaning it read something from the badge that was just swiped in, it's checking the bytes and then it is returning the payload. And then what's function 2 doing? It's doing the same thing, but basically now it's checking badge checker coil 25. Okay, what else we can find? Global configuration nodes, UI base, UI tab, dashboard. Let's open up the node red dashboard. And to go there, we have the same IP address and then slash UI. So we see the two controls, motion detector and the badge that we also see here. And we clearly see they're both on and they're both on here as well. So let's try and mess with those, see what happens. So I'm going to disable the motion detector. Now going back to node red, we can see it's off. Going back to the gate status monitor is still closed. Let's disable the uh, badge checker. It is off. And oh look, the gate is open. Let's go. Now both are turned off. And on the website, the gate is open. I guess there's safety fallback. If the system can't read badges, it just lets the whole village in, right? And under the gate image, we get the flag, but I'm not going to show you that because for try hack me terms of service, I can't show you that. You got to solve it yourself. If you've enjoyed this, give it a like. It really helps out and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss more CTF solves like this. Thanks for watching and I will see you on the next one. Bye bye.